What's going on there guys? Good evening. It's the Earthmaster here on this Monday night, October 17th, 2022. It is about 9.18 p.m. California time along the West Coast and a 3.0 over here around the Mediterranean, the latest earthquake here on the globe. Uh, notice some of these white rings here indicating some more recent earthquake activity and that's kind of what we're seeing right now tonight as that earthquake trend goes across the region so far it looks like a 4.0 in the area uh, the largest one uh, right now so let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here from the usgs map here showing the last 24 hours of earthquake activity and as we scoot over here around the turkey area that's where the latest 4.0 is occurring of course we've seen a little trend of movement here close to the greece area around the mediterranean sea area some of the activity not shown up on the map due to the 4.0 threshold that the USGS uh, keeps in check there. As far as recent activity goes here along the Western Pacific, well, there's not a whole lot. Um, looks like a 4.4 up here um, just into the Japan area, about 41 kilometers deep is the latest one. Uh, and then prior to that, most of this activity down here, down south, is from earlier this afternoon time frame. So a little bit of pause in the earthquake department uh, for these regions. The big island of Hawaii still continuing. Uh, looks like one earthquake up here near the hill in a slump. That's a, uh, a little fault system. I shouldn't say a little fault system. It's fairly big. A little potential out there. Um, may have to cover that on another night as far as the potential about a, uh, a collapse, a collapse so to speak, uh, should this uh, happen a little bit of a tsunami worry but for now just a little 1.8 occurring at about 4.4 kilometers deep uh, most of the activity confined to the Pahala and the Mauna Loa area although I don't think the USGS is showing all of the movement up here at the Mauna Loa uh, area so we're going to check out the latest map here in regards to Mauna Loa and the earthquake activity, we're going to key up this uh, seismograph station here and take a look at the last uh, six hours or so. Seen uh, a couple earthquakes, definitely a handful of earthquakes listed up here on the map. Uh, probably count uh, seven or eight of them, it looks like, over the past six hours. And that is a little bit more than what the USGS is showing up here uh, for the region. But uh, activity still continuing there at Mauna Loa and the Pahala area as we speak any new movement to report down here in the south america region looks like the latest one is another aftershock sequence here out into the cocos ridge area kind of out here in the middle of this plate uh, the cocos plate of course this area did see a 6.3 earthquake uh two days ago a couple days ago since then, uh, a couple aftershocks as well. This is a, somewhat of an unusual area uh, to see earthquake activity away from the plate boundary. But uh, either way, a little bit of aftershock continuing there right now. That's the latest quake in that area. Prior to that, 4.6. Up into the Middle America Trench, the southern end at 182 kilometers deep underneath the Nicaragua area. The earthquake, uh, again, a 4.6 magnitude. Down here in the south part of the South American region, not a whole lot going on. A couple small earthquakes from earlier. Eastern portion of the states, pretty spotty. Not, not a whole lot going on there either. And movement around Oklahoma. Looks like the latest shows a 1.9. And then some of this earlier activity from much earlier this morning time frame. Uh, the 1.9 striking uh, looks, I can already see what's out there just by looking at this road network. Uh, looks like there's some uh, pumping operations out there once again. Looks like it's very close within feet of this one at about five kilometers deep for that uh, five kilometers deep for that 1.9. Up into the Yellowstone area, looks like they did report a couple of these earthquakes. The latest one shows a, a 1.0 or a 0.1. That one was from earlier this afternoon. So let's go ahead and check out the latest seismograph station here of Yellowstone. And uh, things still kind of uh, continuing today. Not for certain how many now we have over the last few weeks. But uh, 
Well, we'll get up a tally here pretty soon. Some of these small little earthquakes localized to the uh, vicinity of Yellowstone. Let's see what the USGS has for the last 30 days. And I know they probably haven't got every single earthquake. <coughs> Excuse me. But it uh, looks like they're trying, right? Over the last 30 days, 731 earthquakes for a tally so far. And I'm not even certain that they reported all the, the very small ones, a little bitty small microquakes. But uh, it looks like they at least put the majority of them up here. And uh, most of the swarming has been continuing just outside the Yellowstone caldera to the northwest here. All right, see what we got here. Uh, Idaho, of course, this earthquake near the Sawtooth Fault System near Stanley, uh, striking earlier this morning time frame. Not a whole lot going on through the Pacific Northwest, Northern California. Got, uh, what do we got up here? Earlier this afternoon, we've seen some uh, movement. Looks like a 2.5. The latest quake there um, just on the Pacific side of the plate boundary Let's see what else we got uh, some older movement here across the Macama fault one earthquake over here around the Antelope Valley area not the one down south but up here in uh, Central California I guess you could call that over here by Nevada near the Walker region 1.0 at 8.7 kilometers as we head down south things a little spotty as well uh, there's some movement on the Wheeler Ridge, but that's basically some older movement, it looks like. And a uh, pretty good sequence of little um, query blasts out there. Not for certain if that's the right thing to do on a major fault, but uh, that's, that's what they're doing. Uh, some down south here near the San Bernardino Mountains as well. A little bit of activity lighting up here in the red circles. A point six on the North American side of the plate boundary next to the San Andreas Fault. And one uh, little point two on the San Jacinto fault zone. So, no, currently no major unrest going on there in Southern California. Uh, up north into the Alaska area, getting a trail of activity from about the Cook Inlet through the Aleutian Trench all the way up through Denali. You almost find a little, uh, draw a little line and connect the dots up here just outside the Fairbanks region. No major activity, just a little bit increasing movement there in the microquake department. All right, tremor map tonight uh, along the Cascadia, 149 epicenters of tremor. Things appear to be tapering off slightly. Uh, a little bit there in Oregon and uh, a small portion at the very southern end of the Casca Cascadia uh, underneath the North America or the uh, Northern California region. So looking at these spikes up here, kind of looks like... Uh, you know, these little intervals right here are kind of what I'm watching. And they have been getting awfully close together as far as the time frame. Uh, the amount of time that has passed in between each tremor event. So, and most of these, a lot of these tremor events are these 14-month uh, intervals, I believe it is, that we see up here around the Seattle area. Uh, but this is in a completely different location. And um, it would be interesting to see how this plays out. Once that uh, activity kicks up up here into the northern part of the Cascadia. But uh, either way, these lines getting much, much closer together. What it means? Well, it means that there's a lot more trimmer, <laughs> right? <laughs> Makes sense. But what does that mean for the Cascadia? Uh, you know, we'll have to watch this pretty closely and see how it plays out. Space weather tonight, solar weather activity, things kind of on the mellow side. Green conditions across the board. If you like green, like I do, then uh, you'll enjoy these uh, very minimal conditions. But I, I'm kind of a space weather guy, so I'd actually love to see these much more elevated. Uh, only a 45% chance of a sea flare and a very rare possibility of an M flare at best. But uh, other than that, things are just very mellow. Uh, the coronal hole down here, number 34, which is now named, is growing and it's pretty massive. But it is situated out there on the southern hemisphere of the sun. Not going to be super earth directed as far as the position goes. We might get a glancing blow from it. We'll have to watch that pretty closely uh, in the coming days as that rotates into view. For now, calm conditions. Not a good chance at all for the auroras tonight. And uh, space weather conditions in the neutral zone as well. Density, speed, and the BT, BZ component all pretty stable tonight. Alrighty, guys. Have a good night. Just wanted to get a quick update in. 
think it's almost time for bed, right? 9.30? Sounds like a good bedtime for me. Have a good night, folks. We'll catch you guys a little bit later on tomorrow. Peace out.